In the 139th Psalm, the writer David says a remarkable thing. In verse 7 he says, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, that is in the grave, behold, you are there. In fact, he goes on to say, if I take the wings of the morning, the first rays of light that break across the horizon, as if he knew that the speed of light was the limiting speed in the universe, if I could jump on one of those rays and shoot across to the other side of the world, he said, you would meet me there. The Silas Fox had been born out in Saskatchewan near Medicine Hat in 1893. His father died two months after he was born. His mother remarried, but uh, the man she remarried was a drunkard and a, an abusive, and so she left with the children, and Silas was raised in a single home. He never heard the gospel until uh, sometime later he was adopted by his uncle to aid his mother, and he came under the sound of the gospel. But it wasn't until he was accosted by another drunkard who said to him, don't end up like me. Put your trust in Jesus now that Silas Fox got down beside his bed and trusted the Lord Jesus. The Lord stirred his heart to go to the mission field as a young man, and he and his wife, just two days after they were married, left for India, settled in Andhra Pradesh, and Silas Fox became known as the White Fox of Andhra Pradesh. He worked with a gentleman named Agrippa, who was a, a native evangelist, he was called the Black Fox, and the two of them worked together. They were very unusual evangelists. One of the things they would do is that Agrippa would stand on one side of a main intersection and Silas Fox on the other. And the one would call to the other questions about the Bible. Why do you trust the Bible? How do you know Jesus is the Son of God? And so they would talk to each other across the intersection, giving the impression that there was an argument going on, and soon crowds would gather to hear this ongoing argument. I remember he would uh, take his testament and put it on the ground and put his hat over it and then start jumping up and down. It's alive, it's alive, he would say. <laughs> and when the crowd gathered, he'd take off his hat, pull out the Bible, and begin to preach the gospel. On one occasion, it's told that he was visiting another famous missionary, Hanley Bird, in the city of what is now Mumbai, Bombay, and uh, he was preaching on the verse uh, Jude 23, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. And at one point in his preaching, when there was a large crowd there, he started shouting, fire, 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 uh, to impress upon them the danger of hellfire that the people were in. Well, someone overheard this, and you know what happened. The next day, the newspaper headline read, Fiery American Preacher Calls Out Bombay Fire Department. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Well, this dear brother, Silas Fox, continued on serving the Lord until just before his 90th birthday. He and his wife had, I think, six children, and I knew quite well the oldest child, a daughter named Ruth, who lived out in the Vancouver, British Columbia area in her senior years. And on one occasion, I was out to dinner in the same company with Miss Fox. She was sitting across from me, a lady with electric blue eyes, a ready smile, just full of life in her old age. And I said to her, uh, Sister Fox, do you have any good stories to tell me about the work of the Lord? Well, she said, I have a little English car and it has a handbrake and the handbrake was sticking and I asked around my apartment, who knows someone that could fix this for me? And they said, well, there's a new mechanic down the road. His name is Ken Mashimoto. You go and see Ken and he'll fix it. And so she said, I drove down there and the car was taken in. And she said, when I picked it up, actually the next morning it wouldn't even work it was completely seized so i called the tow truck and they came and and he said where do you want me to take it and i said well there's no use taking it to ken mashimoto he made it worse than it was before he said no no i know ken he'll make this right we'll go there and so they hooked up her little car and took it down to his shop
After a time, she was sitting in the waiting room. Ken Mashimoto came in and he apologized to her and he said, one of my employees was working on it and he doesn't realize the English do thing backward and, and the cotter pin goes in the other way and that was all that was needed and now it's working fine. And she said, how much do I owe you? And he said, oh, it's free, it's absolutely free. And she said, that's just like the gospel. And he said, now, Miss Fox, you have Jesus and I have Buddha. And she said, don't you ever compare Jesus and Buddha. What did Buddha do for your sins? Jesus died for your sins. And beside that, Jesus is alive, Buddha's dead. Don't you ever compare Jesus and Buddha. And Ken said, you know, you sound just like my old Sunday school teacher, Elizabeth Palmer. He was trying to hide the fact that he'd been exposed to the gospel, but he knew it. He said, you know, it would be great to see Elizabeth Palmer again. And Miss Fox, with a twinkle in her eye, said, well, why don't you pray to Buddha and see if he can arrange it? He said, I don't think it would do any good. After all, you've reminded me that the Buddha's dead. And she said, well, I'll ask Jesus because he knows where Elizabeth Palmer is. And so away she went into her little English car and began to pray. But she said, I knew that faith without works is dead. And so I started calling around all of the Japanese churches in the lower mainland of British Columbia, of which there are many. And no one had ever heard of a missionary to Japan named Elizabeth Palmer. Well, she said, one morning I was praying in my little sunroom and when I opened my eyes, there on the table beside my chair uh, was a missions magazine and on the front cover was a pagoda and the title of an article by a missionary to Japan named Adrian Presson, Pat Presson. I sat down and I wrote a letter to him and I said, have you ever heard of a missionary named Elizabeth Palmer? And he wrote back and he said, she lives on my street. So uh, there are a few other people living in Tokyo, of course. Uh, he gave the address and she wrote a letter to Elizabeth Palmer explaining about Ken. And it wasn't too long until she received a letter from Elizabeth Palmer with another letter inside for Ken. And so she took the little letter, got in her car, drove down to his shop and went in and said, Ken, Jesus did know where Elizabeth Palmer is. <laughs> And it wasn't long until Elizabeth Palmer, now in her 80s, uh, came to Canada and took Ken out to hear the gospel and believes that he put his trust in the Lord Jesus. It doesn't matter where you travel. It doesn't matter how you try to hide from the gospel. The Lord Jesus is as close as a prayer. And the prayers, no doubt, of Elizabeth Palmer had followed that young man who used to be in her Sunday school class and eventually those prayers landed on him as he was working in Vancouver in his mechanic shop. I hope you're appreciating these stories. They're not just for entertainment. They're to stir our hearts to more serious prayer, to more faithful testimony, and to glorifying and honoring the Lord who, like the Good Shepherd, goes out on the hillsides into the wilderness looking for every lost sheep that he can bring home.